One of the biggest issues in dental practices today is finding and hiring new team members and new excellent team members. Well, is it possible that maybe you're not looking in the right places? In today's episode, we're going to talk about that and I'll share some places to find team members that maybe you never thought of. Hey, I'm Dr. Richard Matto. I'm co-founder of the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success. And thanks so much for being with us today on the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. Before we get into the part about hiring team members, I've got an extremely special announcement about two really cool events coming up that you do not want to miss. One is that we are doing a webinar at the Matto Center called The Dirty Dozen, how to answer the most difficult questions that patients ask. I'm talking about questions like, hey, doc, can you just fill it? Why did my last dentist tell me about this? Um, Maybe the patient has perio disease and they're saying, can I just get a regular cleaning? Come on, man. Or our favorite, you're not in network with the patient's insurance, but they ask, do you take my insurance? Can I come to your practice even though you're not in network? We'll be talking about the definitive answer to those questions, plus many more on the upcoming webinar, The Dirty Dozen, how to answer the most difficult questions that patients ask. It's Wednesday, March 27th. It's no charge, of course. It's 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific. If you're not in one of those time zones, you're going to have to figure it out yourself. But please, please join us. To register, just go to matto.com slash dozen. That's M-A-D-O-W dot com slash D-O-Z-E-N. Even if you can attend on Wednesday evening, please register because we will send you information on the replay. If you don't sign up, you may not get the replay info. So just go to matter.com slash dozen, D-O-Z-E-N. And speaking of events, I've been kind of touring the country already this year. I've been to, man, where have I been? Um, Orlando, Philly, Austin, Nashville, Akron, Ohio, presenting my new latest and greatest course called How to Provide a Memorable Patient Experience in Your Practice. But I know most of you aren't in one of those cities to which I've been traveling. So we are doing kind of a one-time seminar, full day of how to provide a memorable patient experience in your practice. It's open to the public. That's you. But I'm only inviting my email list and podcast listeners. So it's going to be a very small seminar. It will be Friday, June 14th in my hometown of Baltimore, Maryland, kind of right in my home, actually. So you don't want to miss that. I've kept the tuition extremely low. It's for doctors and teams. Go to www.matto.com slash experience to register. Again, we are doing a very rare seminar appearance in Baltimore, Maryland, Friday, June 14th. It's how to provide a memorable patient experience in your practice. And we'll talk about all the things that gets your patients to refer their friends and colleagues, say yes to their treatment, show up on time, pay for their treatment, tell everybody about your practice. In short, become the ideal patients, grow your revenues, help you enjoy dentistry more. Just go to matter.com slash experience to register. Okay, now let's get, get down to what they might call the meat of the issue here. And that is finding and hiring the best team members. You know, it used to be an exciting and creative process. We'd put the word out in the community and qualified candidates would come flooding in, but it's not that way anymore, is it? Probably the number one or number two complaint we hear is I just can't find more and great team members. So what happened? What happened? Well, a few things happened. One, of course, was COVID-19. This changed everything in the year 2020, shook up the healthcare industry, Now, fortunately, as a whole, dentistry had a great recovery. Just a few years after the start of the pandemic, so many dental practices are once again flourishing and reporting their best years ever, especially practices we work with, hint, hint. But during the time the practices were closed and due to the fear of the contagiousness and effects of COVID-19, a lot of team members were not quite ready to retire, but they thought this might be the best time to do so. Others found careers where they could work from home And the amount of job openings went up during our great recovery, but the amount of people interested in filling these jobs went way down. Supply and demand kind of hit a ratio that we had never, ever seen before. Another factor is that many young people just aren't interested in healthcare careers. The millennials and the Gen Zers, they came of age at a time where traditional jobs like working in a dental practice 
maybe weren't seen as desirable as they once were. I mean, social media expanded so many people's horizons. People could start their own businesses with just a computer and an internet connection. People were looking for jobs where they could not get dressed up. They could just go to the coffee shop down the street in a pair of sweatpants or work from home or may maybe even anywhere in the world. So these types of careers just became a little less desirable. And then, of course, DSOs. You know, I don't like blaming everything on DSOs. It's not really a constructive thing to do to blame everything, all of our ills on the DSOs. But they do play a role in the employment crunch. Corporate interests are looking for rapid practice growth. Sometimes they have what seems like unlimited funds because of their private equity investments. They are giving people sign-on bonuses and instant raises and better benefits than many dental practices can offer. So DSOs really did change the employment landscape as well. You know, I saw a recent survey, the ADA surveyed 250,000 hygienists and dental assistants and found that more than half have recently quit the profession feeling overworked and underpaid and burnt out. So unfortunately, the days of just placing an ad in some local rag that says FT dental assistant needed and being flooded with re replies, well, those days are over. They're done. But that doesn't mean that we can't find great qualified team members to add to our already great and qualified team. We just maybe need to get a little more original, maybe a little more unique in our searches. So I'm just going to tell you a few ways um, that I've used successfully in the past that some of our coaching clients and other people have used successfully to find and hire great dental team members, ways you might not think of. Okay, this first one is going to sound really counterintuitive, but that is don't look for a dental team member. What? I can find a dental team member by not looking for a dental team member? Well, here's what I mean. A lot of people use platforms like Indeed or LinkedIn, many other online sites, even traditional sites. Like if you live in a small town, you might have a local newspaper where a classified ad would be a great way to find a new team member. So what's the problem here? Well, if you list your ad in the dental section, this causes a severe restriction because you'll only be seen by those who are definitively looking for a position in the dental field. And many times those are people who just didn't work out in another dental practice for one reason or another, if you know what I mean. There are people out there who are completely qualified and would love a job in the dental field, but don't know that they're qualified or maybe have never even thought of it. So here's what I'm going to suggest. Instead of placing your ad, whether it's online, print, whatever, in the dental section, place an ad in the customer service area. It's a much more generalized section. You'll attract people who like working with the public, who are in tune or want to learn about providing an excellent experience with their patients, clients, customers, guests, whatever we want to call them. So many people looking for a rewarding career just would never even think of dentistry. Maybe they think you have to go to four years of school to even work in a dental office. So when you list your ad under customer service, it greatly expands your horizons. You'll bring in candidates with an outgoing service-oriented personality who might just be great for your practice. So give it a try. Okay, here's another way. Network with your colleagues. You know, sometimes we're afraid to talk to our fellow dentists about things going on in our offices. Sometimes our colleagues, our fellow dentists, know of highly qualified people looking for a, a, a job. Maybe they didn't work out in one office, but it wasn't for a bad reason. It might have been geographic or family or something, and they're ready to go back to work, and they're looking for a great office, and maybe one of your colleagues knows about it. Maybe they just weren't a good fit for their office for some factors, but they could still be really valuable in your practice. Ask around. Keep an ear to the ground. Mention it at your local study club. Tell your friends and colleagues that you're looking for a great team member. So, so often they know of someone that they can recommend to you. So, okay. How about social media? I kind of look at social media for a dental practice when you're looking for a team member as a showcase of sorts. You know, you look at most offices, Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok, whatever, and they're just, they might be giving dental health tips or maybe promos for services, whatever. Let's use social media to showcase our practice's culture, our the fun that our team has, the great things we do for our patients. Put up authentic posts about your team and the great things you're doing in the community. And that may attract candidates who resonate with your practice's value. You want to show your office as the place to work 
in the community. Of course, you want to talk about dental health care, uh, maybe promote some services, give dental health tips, all of those things. But make sure that when you're doing your social media posts, you're highlighting your practice as an excellent place to work. You have a fabulous culture. You help people. You genuinely do good things. Okay. How about your patients? Now, I'm not saying that you should cry to your patients that you're short-staffed, probably not a good move, but when you're engaging your patients in conversation about non-dental things, which is always a good thing, listen closely. Maybe somebody will mention a child who just finished high school or community college or college, someone who's moving back to town, they don't have a career yet. Ask a little more, ask about their career goals. That could lead to a possible interview. You just never know. And speaking of that, the next thing I'll talk about is what I call Every transaction is an interview. You know, there are just some great people out there who are stuck in jobs they don't like, who are providing customer service, and maybe they've never even considered a career in dentistry. I'm talking about people who are working in banks, restaurants, retail, hospitality like hotels, catering, things like that, and so many other places. That's why every transaction you have with someone can be considered the first step of an interview. I gotta tell you, last week, I had to go into a bank. I don't think I've been in like an actual bank lobby in years, but I had to go in for a reason and I, I made a deposit there. And the people working there were so nice and they were trained to tell me about some CDs, or, you, know, you know, like a, a, a CD by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. No, not that kind of CD, a certificate of deposit. All kinds of things they're recommending. They were trained to do this. They did really well. They were smiling. They were friendly. If I were looking for a position in my dental office, I might have asked one of them, hey, let's get out of this crappy dead-end job in a bank. No, I wouldn't put it that way. But have you ever considered working in healthcare, working in dentistry? They had the great customer service skills. So every transaction, you know, wherever you go, a restaurant, a bank, hospitality, a local business, just realize some people feel a little stuck in their jobs and they've never considered dentistry. Somebody might have the personality and they present well. Be a little bold. Ask if they've ever considered it. You know, working in, in healthcare is very prestigious. The hours are good. There's a high level of satisfaction. You might be able to offer this person something that they never would have thought of and couldn't have achieved elsewhere. Okay. I've given you a bunch of ways other than the traditional ways to find people to work in your dental practice. I've kind of saved the best for last and I hired at least three or four great team members this way and that is to look in your own patient pool. I did this successfully so many times in your practice. Just think about your patients, the people who come to your office. You already know who's responsible. They show up on time or early for their appointments and they pay. You know who presents well, who is well-dressed and clean looking. You know who is a sharp person. You know who has a pleasing personality, boom. I just described the, the perfect dental office employee, right? They're responsible, they present well, they're sharp, they're smart, they have a great personality. So who are the people that is, are in your patient pool that are like this? Think of them. Now cross-reference this list with people who are recent grads, moms who might wanna go back to work, recent retirees and the like. Next time these people come in, casually mention in your conversation that you would love to hire someone like them. Hey, this might sound crazy. Have you ever thought about working in a dental office? You can talk to them about the different positions, tell them how satisfying it is to give someone a great smile or get them out of pain and then say, hey, maybe you should come in one day. You can shadow our dental assistant or sit up at the front desk or see what the hygienist does. Well, hygienist might be a stretch because I don't have a hygiene degree, of course, but you know what I mean. Have them hang out in the dental office and see if they like it. It might be a great job for them. I'm telling you, I found so many great people right in my own patient pool. So some great ways to find dental team members and hire them in the non-traditional ways. You know, a lot of sales courses use the acronym ABC. Always be closing. If you saw the great movie, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know that scene where they say ABC, always be closing. Put that coffee down. Coffee is for closers. What's your name? Well, if you watch the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, you might think I sound like a wacko, but let's just say, instead of ABC, always be closing. In our dental practices, we should ABH, always be hiring. Sometimes by the time you think you need a new team member, it's too late. It's too late to start the search. So always be on the lookout for qualified 
talented team members who can enhance your office. And remember, finding the right team members, it's about identifying candidates who align with your practice's values, your culture, and your goals. And employing these approaches that I just talked about can really help you stand out, attract great candidates who are passionate about your practice or will be in the future. So many people have just never thought that they could work in the dental office. Let's make it be known amongst all these types of people I just talked about. Wow, that was fun. I hope I gave you some great advice. Before I sign off, I just want to remind you of a couple things. First of all, as you probably know, we don't pay a percentage to process our credit cards at the Matto Center because we use Stacks, and you should do the same thing. Go to matto.com slash save to find out how you can use Stacks for your credit card processing and also not pay that monthly nasty overage fee. We've got two awesome events coming up. A live event, Friday, June 14th in Baltimore. I'll be doing my most popular seminar ever, how to provide a memorable patient experience in your practice. You can learn more about what I'll be teaching that day and even sign up. And I'm telling you, this is kind of a private, low-key seminar just for our podcast listeners and email subscribers. Speaking of that, you can go to matter.com slash newsletter to subscribe. And if you subscribe to the e-letter, we're going to be giving away a coffee mug to a few lucky winners, a dental practice fixers coffee mug. I don't want to get off track here. Go to matter.com slash experience to find more about this awesome June 14th, Friday, June 14th seminar. Also, make sure you attend our upcoming webinar. It's Wednesday, Wednesday, March 27th. It's called The Dirty Dozen, How to Answer the Most Difficult Questions Patients Ask. And yes, we'll be talking about a dozen questions, including everybody's favorite. Can I come into your office even though I don't see you on my insurance list? Go to matter.com slash dozen to sign up for that. Wow, this is a lot of stuff for today. I feel like I've been talking up a storm. So I'm going to let you digest all of this. Thank you so, so, so much for being a listener or viewer of the Dental Practice Fixers podcast. I'll ask you a quick favor. If you like what you're seeing, give us a five star or thumbs up or whatever rating your platform encourages. If you have a few more minutes, say some great words about us. I'm Dr. Richard Matto. I'm co-founder of the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success. You can email me personally, rich, R-I-C-H, at matto.com. I'd love to hear from you. Go to our website, matto.com, M-A-D-O-W.com to see what we're up to. Thanks so much for listening to the Dental Practice Fixers, and I'll see you next time.